It's week three. Major plot point. You have a basic idea of what your story looks like, of some of the scenes and events that you know are going to happen, so what we're going to do this week is write them all down. Don't worry about order that comes next week in organization. Now what I like to do is I like to break the events down into segments. Since I'm working on a book series, I break them up into books. You can also do chapters if you're doing a novel, or just the beginning, middle, and end. So what I did is for every book that I know is going to be in my series, I just took a sheet of paper, I wrote book one at the top, and I just started listing using bullet points all of the events and things that I know have to happen. So now we're not going to worry about order because, like I said, that's going to be in the organization stage. Right now we're just going to try and put everything that you know is going to happen in your book down on paper. The list may be short or it may be unbelievably long. These bullet points are going to cover everything from plot events and major scenes to uh, romance and the romantic interest of your storyline and your character's development. Anything that you know is going to happen, you're going to write it down. So if you know that eventually in your series your character is going to learn what happened to his long lost father, you're going to want to put the beginning notes of that possibly in the first book. You're going to want him to find out that eh, maybe his father disappeared instead of abandoning him or whatever you want to do that. So anything that you know is going to happen in your book, you just want to give it a bullet and you want to write it down so that you know that you're going to include that in your outline. This major plot point outline is going to be the beginning of your story outline. We're going to eventually upgrade this into the outline that you are going to use to write your novel. Now, when you're writing the major plot points, you can't just concentrate on the events that you're going to write. You, as the writer, also have to know everything that's going on behind the scenes for all of your characters. Author Karen Hoover, in an outlining workshop I attended, said that she likes to write down what every single character is doing in every single chapter, whether they're featured in that chapter or not. She likes to know where all of her characters are and what they're doing at every point in time of your novel. And this is a really, really good idea. So if it turns out that the janitor at your main character's nursing home is secretly passing off information to the villain, you're going to have to know when and where he's doing that. You need to know exactly when he's leading the villain and when he's eavesdropping on the main character to get the information so you know what kind of information he can reasonably obtain and when he can get it to the villain so that your reader can reasonably believe that he is actually a spy. As the writer, you have to make sure that the janitor's movements are in sync with everything else that's going on in your story. So you can believably convince the reader that he had the time and the access to the information to hand it over to the villain. That being said, your major plot points are going to include a lot of behind-the-scenes information and things your readers won't see or even realize until further down the road. This is especially important with stories of mystery or suspense. You don't want your story to wind up being the rooster crowed at midnight from that one MASH episode, where in the very end, somebody figures out that the supposed murderer couldn't have possibly have done it because he was locked in a broom closet during one of the murders. You don't want to be that story. You want to know what all of your characters are doing, whether it's included in the story or not. So that's what you're going to do this week. You're going to write down everything that you know is going to happen in this book, the major events, the character development, and any romantic plots you want to include. And like I said, you don't have to put it in order just yet. If you want to put it in order, that's fine. But um, I find that trying to put it in order this early um, often gives me writer's block because I don't know necessarily what order it goes into, and that's the reason that I just write down the major plot points as they come to me, because I can easily organize them later, and it is much easier for me to do it more quickly if I don't try and organize them, organize them up front. Okay. So, that is it for week three. Be back next Thursday. We're going to talk about organization, and we're going to get you guys started on a world-building Bible. And remember, if you have any questions or you want to start up a conversation, just tweet Plotbender over on Twitter, and I'm tracking the hashtag, so I will definitely reply. If you have any questions, you can also ask them in the comments below, and I've got all of the links for the rest of the videos in this series down in the, down in the box below.